Hey guys, good Thursday morning to you here, John from Fisherman's Digest. And today is the big day, it's Thursday. That means the Grand Rapids Sports Show is gonna start today at one o'clock. Uh, it's gonna run all weekend from Thursday at one all the way through Sunday, it ends at five. Uh, you got to get out there. It's the ultimate sports show here in Grand Rapids. I'll be there speaking a couple of times a day. The best thing is, isn't that I'll be there. It's that we've got a bunch of other really well-known speakers coming in, teaching you guys their tips and tactics, as well as lots of great tackle, a lot of booth setups, going to be a lot of boats, people showing you what they got for this year. So make sure you get over to the ultimate fishing show. Now, a really good report today. We're going to do a preview on the Detroit River. Now we got two guides that give us great information all year long. Captain Eric Long from Long Lines Charters and Captain Michael Downey from Relentless Grind Guide Service. Both will be providing fishing reports to you guys all season long to keep you in the know of where to fish on the Detroit River and how they're catching them. So this preview comes kind of from both of those two guys. So you know what, the Detroit River is gonna, it's already going, that's just point blank. The minute you can get onto the river in open water and, and you've got enough, uh, you know, uh, enough ice melt so that you're not getting cram rammed into by big ice flows, you can catch fish on the Detroit River. There's fish there right now. So by the end of this weekend, you should be able to get out there and negotiate around, just be careful. You know, you got floating debris really early in the year. If there's one little bit of caution, I'm gonna tell you, be careful in low light conditions. You are gonna have logs and stuff coming down the river as the ice releases, as well as some really hard to see ice flows. And if you hit them hard enough, that can do some serious damage to you, even put you in danger. So be careful of that. Now, when it comes to the tactics, really the setup is really critical. You're gonna want a short five foot six, five foot nine, no more than six foot long, medium heavy rod. It's really important that you can feel and control your bait. And so on your, uh, I use a small to medium sized spinning reel and on that I spool 10 pound test braid. That's really critical. Six to 10 pound test braid, no more than that. You want very thin line diameter. Then I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna direct tie with a uni knot that last little bit, maybe 18 inches or so, I'm gonna put maybe eight to 10 pound test fluorocarbon. That's what I'm gonna tie my bait presentation on. For me, my bait presentation is usually always from a half ounce to a one ounce Wyandotte uh, Worm uh, River Leadhead Jig. And then I use a combination of the original Wyandotte Worms or Motor City Minnows. That's what I go to, it's my go-to bait. If I'm going to tip it with anything, I'm going to tip it with a minnow on that plastic presentation. Almost never am I gonna fish just a jig and live bait. So um, how do I choose my colors and where do I choose to fish? That's the next thing people wanna know. So the really, really important thing here is that early in the season, you start shallow right away in the morning and then you work your way to deeper water as the season progresses. Um, that seems to be something that I, we've really paid a lot of attention to. I'm fishing in less than 10 feet of water very often in the month of March. And uh, then I'll work my way as the day progresses. If I see the fish shift or slide from boat pressure or from sunlight penetration or from cleaning water. And that's the other factor that's going to determine how deep they go is how clean the water is. So, you know, if you get super clean water, my suggestion would be actually to start your boat up and go find some dirty water. It's that important to have some color to the water. And so I would rather fish shallow water in dirty, shallow and dirtier water than I would rather fish cleaner water. There's a point where yes, it's too dirty, so you find that fine line, but wherever you find that color where it's good and stained, but you still have some visibility, maybe a foot or so to your jig head, that's plenty good. Now I'm gonna string on uh, contrasting colors uh, of either the Wyandotte Worm or the Motor City Minnow. The Motor City Minnow offers a lot of different combo colors to give you two different looks at once. I'm always gonna use a free flying stinger. I don't hook it into the minnow or the worm. I let it fly free. I catch a lot of fish on that free flying stinger. It works great. Some colors just for people who aren't familiar with it. Obviously the original brown worm or black worm with the ice tail are two good choices. Uh, also those original base colors 
with different colors like a bright orange or a bright chartreuse tail can sometimes make a big difference. I also really like the new Royal D color and that's a purple with a fleck gold combo color in the Motor City Minnow. Love that color, caught some fish on it this fall filming a show. Actually it was the bait you had to have in the boat to catch almost anything. We probably caught two thirds of the fish on that bait and I really like that color as well. The big tip I'm going to give anybody when you're fishing the Detroit River is the importance of the guy in the bow of the boat only fishing with one rod and spending most of his concentration to make sure he's keeping his rod completely vertical. If you try to fish two rods in the front of the boat, you end up splitting your concentration too much and you don't do a good job of controlling your boat. Remember, bow straight into wind. Wherever the wind direction is from, you have to be facing it and then you adjust to wind and current to keep yourself vertical. And that's really the key to Detroit River fishing. Always make sure that when at rest, that jig is a couple inches off the bottom so you're kind of down pounding it into the bottom and pulling it back up and holding it. Remember, as that current flows, that jig is flowing along the bottom. Walleyes will see that if it's just an inch or two or three off the bottom and they'll go ahead and grab it even when you're at rest. But if you have that set too close to the bottom, you're liable to just throw a bunch of tackle into the bottom of the river and lose all kinds of stuff and that's never any fun for anybody. So down jigging and pounding the bottom and making sure you stay in really good contact with your jig, staying vertical by pointing your bow into the boat and also don't go too light. A lot of people, especially novices, think, oh, the lighter the better. You may have heard that fallacy back you know, from people in the past, go as light as you can go. On the Detroit River and heavy current, I completely disagree with that. I would say go relatively heavy, if anything, so that you helps you maintain verticality because that's the critical factor and staying in good contact with the bottom. So try out some great products from Wyandotte Worms, whether it's the original worm or the Motor City Minnow. Add a stinger to it. Don't let that think for a second. It cuts down on the bites. It doesn't. Stay vertical and start shallow and work yourself deep look for stained water. Those are the principles of the Detroit River. Don't spend another season breaking your back using five gallon gas cans to fuel your toys. The FlowFast portable fluid transfer system is your solution. A great tool for fueling your ATVs, snowmobile, boat, garden tractor and more, FlowFast eliminates gas sloshing on you and your machines, plus works in reverse to pull unused fuel from your equipment at the end of each season. The pump transfers from container to container in seconds and moves up to eight gallons a minute. Log on to FlowFast.com for a dealer near you.